it's Kaylin here at Full Purpose and Heart. I've got another look in the book video for you today to look a little bit deeper into an Evan Moore resource. This is gonna be Evan Moore Science. There's quite a glare there from my window, sorry about that. Um, this is Evan Moore Science and it's done so that you can do a little lesson every single day that complements whatever curriculum it is that you choose. So. This is grade two that we're gonna thumb through today, but they do have it available in grades one through grade six. So if you've got a kiddo in a different grade um, and you're just kind of curious what it looks like on the inside, then we can go ahead and take a look and see if it's something that you wanna incorporate into your classroom. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as I mentioned, this is a daily science resource from Evan Moore. And Evan Moore actually has a whole line of daily um, resources that are on any given subject. They've got lots of different subjects. I've used their daily geography before, and I've done a look in the book in it for that. Make sure you check that video. I'll put it in the eye in the sky if you're curious about that. Um, but we used daily geography for first grade, and I did enjoy it because I felt like these small lessons that you can put like I put him in my student's daily um, workbook that he has. He's like, I got a little binder where he has all of his work that he does. And you can just have one section that's science and it'll be a good, like for us, it's a really good review that he can do independently to review whatever science topic it is that we're talking about. Now this resource has several different topics and I'll show you when I flip the camera around. Um, so it saddles up really nice to any curriculum that you choose to use. Now. Evan Moore has a lot that you can choose from, so if you wanna bundle it up and save big and get one shipping fee, you can do it that way. Or if you have another science curriculum from another publisher, this is a really great um, companion because it does cover such a broad science topics that it goes well with pretty much any curriculum that you choose. But you do wanna make sure, so, make, so as I flip the camera around, you'll be able to see kind of what topics this one covers to see if it complements the curriculum that you've chosen. I wouldn't use this curriculum all by itself. It's very, very short lessons. If you choose to buy this curriculum as your science curriculum because you're just really feeling it and it's really great, then um, you're probably going to want to expound on, develop, and grow this curriculum into more kind of some hardy topics instead of just a few quick questions. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I flip the camera around. So anyway, like I mentioned, I've done some daily, some of the daily curriculum before in their geography. So I'm looking forward to looking a little bit more at this science and then kind of saddling it up next to the science curriculum that I've selected for my second grade year. I will put all of the curriculum that I'm choosing for my second grader in a separate video. So make sure you check that out if you're interested in learning what it is that I've selected for that, okay? So let's flip this camera around and I'll show you what this resource looks like. All right, so here is the Daily Science Grade 2 resource. I'm going to open the book and talk you through a couple of things that are inside this book and why I like it and why I think it could be a good resource for you. Let's see if we can try to keep the glare down. Um, now, as I mentioned, this is Grade 2, but they do have Grades 1 through 6 available. And inside this book, you're going to get six topics, or they call them big ideas, that you're going to cover. And each of the topics has five weeks worth of lessons, each, each week being Monday through Friday, okay? So you're going to have 30 weeks worth of unit material that you can cover and give to your student with five days, which is, what, 150 lessons, um, which would well cover most school years if you're, most of your school year if you're homeschooling, okay? So let me show you really quick um, what the contents are that are going to be in this book. So the first one here, again, they call them big ideas, is going just to be about life cycles, including the kangaroo, the caterpillar, seeds, and plants. Big idea number two is going to be reproduction. So plants and animals look like their parents. And um, they talk about animals and plants in addition, or on both of them. Okay, this is going to be like earth science, so the elements, rocks, water, and air. And then up here in big idea number four is astronomy, so you've got sun, moon, and stars. No planets on that one, but you've got the sun, moon, and stars. And then big idea number five is sound. Sounds can travel through solids, liquids, and gases. 
And then big idea number six here is going to be magnets. Magnet, the, why does a magnet stick to refrigerator? Which I think is interesting because a lot of refrigerators have it so that they don't stick, but hopefully you've got one that there's the side that you can stick them on. Anyway, um, how do magnets move things stronger than others? How does a compass work, etc. Okay, so the other thing that I'll have you notice here is week five is always going to be your unit review and you have a hands-on activity in each of your big ideas. So this is like a very small um, science experiment or science project idea that you can run through, okay? So this is kind of the layout of the whole thing. Now I will say, and I said this kind of in the beginning, I've underlined it here in the book. This is really intended to be a supplement to whatever science instruction that you're doing every day. So this is not necessarily a standalone. I wouldn't just hand my student this page in his notebook and say, okay, here's your science for the day. Um, and then walk away from it. It really is intended to be a complement to whatever other science instruction you're choosing to do, whether it's curriculum or just like group time or lesson time or that sort of thing, okay? So here is how it is all um, built out, and I'll show you here in big idea number one because the rest of them are similar to this. So you've got big idea number one, and it's going to have your teacher background, so it'll give you kind of a synopsis of what it is you're going to be teaching, so that's nice because you're not kind of going into the dark of that. Um, over here, it's going to talk about what it is, like what the teaching points are going to be, so that's nice because it's a quick, easy glance. And then here in week, um, in the week breakdown, you have a question that you can answer. And you know what I love about this is that on my whiteboard behind me when I teach, I like to have like the learning goal. So this is really cool because especially with how I'm going to be organizing my grade, my second graders year, this is like a no brainer setup for me where I could just put this underneath our science um, objective and say this week in science we're learning why do kangaroos carry babies in their pouches and throughout the week we talk about it so at the end of the week I can just ask my son did you get the learning goal for today um, as we review it every day so that's why I love it because it's just like a quick no-brainer no prep work for me that I can just throw that up on my objectives board and um, then we can go ahead and talk about it now, it also kind of gives you an addition to how it connects to the big idea, and then you've got your vocabulary words on the bottom. Again, a great no-brainer, so you can put together a vocabulary activity and um, teach a little bit more in depth about this unit study, okay? Um, here is your week review. It says you may choose to do these activities to review the concepts, and it gives you of, of the five pages, or are there four? Of the four pages here, it gives you examples of how you can review. All right? So then we go to big idea one. This is week one. Why do kangaroos carry babies in their pouches? On this side here, this is like the teacher's manual version. So you've got day one through day five. And it says exactly what you're going to talk about with the students. Tell the students they will learn about life cycles. Distribute page 10 and introduce the vocabulary. Distribute page 11 and read the introduction with the students, okay? So you're going to be told exactly what you're going to do with those pages. But as I said, you're going to want to develop this a little bit more. I wouldn't just put this in my student's binder and say, okay, hey, what did you learn about today through your worksheet, all right? So here we go, day one, um, and it talks about the life cycles, and you'll talk about puppies, um, and then answer these questions. Anyway, I'm just going to show you quickly how this develops so that when you get to day five, you'll notice that now we're talking about how is the human cycle different than the kangaroo cycle. Um, and then you jump into week two. Now you're talking about caterpillars and butterflies, all right, and how their cycle is a little bit different. Um, anyway, so let's flip through this book and I'll show you what it is that this resource offers.
Okay, now I did want to stop here. I didn't go through every single page because that would have been really monotonous, but they are set up the similar, um, similarly, they are black and white, so it saves on ink when you need to reproduce them. Um, there's not any like cut and paste type of activity, so you can just pull these directly out of the book and use them up as a consumable workbook if you want to use it that way. Now, this is an example of one of those hands-on activities that I mentioned. They are at the end of every unit. And so this is about the magnet and you're going to be making a magnet. It gives you a list of what you need. It tells you in four steps how you're gonna do it. And then they have like a reflection piece here that you can fill in the blanks for your student, okay? So it kind of gives the an idea of how you can create science or make science come to life, which is, of course, is what makes teaching science fun. So here is your answer key in the back. It is um, in a small condensed form instead of having the full page. In the younger years, in, in my um, teacher's manuals, they have the full page that makes it super easy. This is a lot more of what I'm familiar with from my secondary education teaching days. But um, it just gives you like the quick answers right here. So you'll see for this particular page, it just says one, two, three, instead of giving you like the full, you know, thumbnail of what the page looks like. Okay, so here we have, just so you can see, there's a lot of different science curriculum books that you can pull out. These are the skill sharpeners. I am loving skill sharpeners right now, so you can complement this book with a skill sharpeners book. And then on the back here, I'll just show you really briefly that they do have um, all of these daily uh, notebooks or whatever daily work for lots of different subjects. So we've got math, reading, writing, lots of language, art subjects. The daily geography, this is the one that I did for my first grader. You can see that video if you um, look at the eye in the sky, uh, writing, spelling. So anyway, they've got a lot of options here. And this science one, it, like I mentioned, is going to go really great because as I'm building my science curriculum, this is going to complement. I kind of use this as a base to um, begin what subjects we're going to talk about and how I can complement um, what it is that I'm building. So anyway, if you liked this resource, you can check the description box below and I will put a link so that you can check it out a little bit more. Again, this is from Evan Moore, grade two, daily science. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll catch you in another video. Mm -hmm.